Hey guys, it's Benjamin with Benjamin's Exotics, and in today's video, we are going to be pulling the fourth ball python clutch of the 2021 breeding season. So in today's video, we are going to be pulling the fourth ball python clutch of the 2021 breeding season, which is our female pinstripe spider het clown bred to our pastel clown male. Now I actually went to film this exact same video a couple hours back, and I thought that she'd only laid four good eggs and one slug, which is sitting right here, and I thought she was done laying, and then right as I went to film this video, like I said a couple hours back, I saw her laying another slug. So I think she's done at this point. If she has one egg left in her, then um, we'll set it up so that she can actually hopefully get it out of her on her own. I just felt her before filming this, so I'm pretty sure she's empty. I'm pretty sure she's done laying eggs, but let's go ahead and look at her and see how many eggs she has now. So like you can see, this is a beautiful spinner het clown female. She had originally four good eggs and one slug, and like you can see, that is the other slug that she just popped out within the past, let's say, two, two and a half hours, and I think she's done. She looks pretty deflated, but again, it's always hard to tell when they're coiled around the eggs. So since she's a smaller girl, I can actually do this without a tripod. So let me actually grab this slug. I know, I know. Go ahead and actually grab this slug. As you can see, infertile, not good at all. Go ahead and set this guy up here with that other slug. I'll go ahead and get an egg box out so we can actually, well first we need to pull this girl off of the egg. So let's see how many she has and let's make sure that she's empty. So I know. Let's go ahead. Looks like it's just four good eggs. I want to get struck here. Yep, four Nice pearly eggs. They're not the biggest eggs, but they do look healthy. I'll get a flashlight and we'll candle these in a second. Let me go ahead and check her out. So I'm just feeling her. She looks empty and I can see that her belly is, yeah, this is all just caved in. So I'm sure that she is completely empty. She does not have any eggs left in her. So we'll go ahead and we'll put her uh, let's see, I have an open slot up here. So let's go ahead. Put her in there, you did a great job. This is actually, I'm really excited for this clutch. I'd love to hit some pinstripe or even just, you know, single gene spider clowns. But with four eggs, we don't have a real great shot of hitting anything crazy, but hopefully we'll get good odds in this clutch. So I'll go ahead, let me go grab a flashlight, I'll get the egg box out, and we can get this clutch set up in incubator. Okay, so first I want to candle this clutch because especially last time, the last clutch I pulled, which was from a big normal female, a couple of the eggs had really bad vein work and they've actually gone bad. As you'll see in a second, I'll show you guys in the egg box. But let's go ahead and make sure these guys all have good vein work. So like you can see, good vein work on that egg. Pretty good vein work on this egg as well. Good vein work and good vein work. So these are all four fertile eggs. Let's go ahead and grab an egg box and get these guys set up. So since these eggs are all still kind of stuck together, this one is apart, and since she didn't roll them too bad, I'm not gonna flip them and try to get the embryo at the top or anything like that. You can do that if you want, but I think that there isn't gonna be, the, the a theory is that if you take the embryo and you flip it to the top of the egg, you're gonna basically make sure that the embryo doesn't drown in the egg, because if it's at the bottom, the embryo will literally drown in its own fluid, and sometimes the females lay the eggs wrong, or they flip them, and that can cause problems. However, I think that if you're going around and you're taking the eggs that the female laid that have been sitting for who knows how many hours and you're rolling them around and turning them and shining lights inside of them, I think that that in itself can cause problems. And typically, unless the eggs have been kicked out of the clutch 
from the female. So let's say an egg was thrown all the way over here and it was completely spinned around. I don't spin my eggs at all. All I do is I'll take them, how the female laid them, set them right in the egg box. I might get some Q-tips so these guys don't roll. We can put them in the incubator, but honestly, these should be set up good enough that I don't think they're gonna be too much of a problem if I set them correctly. So if we go like that, actually I probably won't need any of the little Q-tips for this clutch because this isn't a very big clutch and these guys should be fine in the incubator. So we'll go ahead and put the lid on these guys and we'll get them set up in the incubator. It can be fun to do with one hand. Normally I don't, but I think I can manage it for this. So this is the incubator. I've showed this off in previous videos. I'll give you guys a little bit of an update on some of the clutches that we have right now. I am cleaning, so it is a bit dirty in here. I was literally just cleaning cages, checked on her, and bam, she had eggs this morning. So I let her go ahead and finish laying the eggs. So we'll get these guys set up. This is the incubator setup. You guys have probably seen it before. Nothing too fancy. So, let me go ahead and grab the egg box. We'll slide it in that empty slot just like that. Make sure nothing rolled. Yep, those guys look good. And in about 60 days, we should be hatching out some really cool baby clown ball pythons if we get lucky and hit the odds. Now just to give you guys a little bit of a clutch update on some of the other clutches, there are some good news and some bad news in this incubator right now. So good news is this top clutch right here is actually, you can barely see it, but this was from our cinnamon female. So it was a cinnamon female bred to our coral glow chocolate male. Those eggs are all starting to cave in, which means that probably in a couple days, they're gonna start to pip, which is awesome. Now the bad news is that the third clutch, which was the clutch that I actually didn't film on camera, two of these eggs have started to go bad. The whole reason why it is very important to candle your eggs before you put them in the incubator is that if they have bad vein work, things like this can happen. And it just happened to be that both of these eggs were not only kicked outside of the clutch, but the egg on the right had literally no vein work at all, and the egg on the left had very poor vein work. I mean, some of the worst vein work I've seen in a long time. And honestly, this clutch wasn't really good in general, it was not the highlight of the season at all. Most of the other eggs had pretty wacky vein work as well, but they're all still doing well. They haven't, you know, started to get all nasty and yellow, and even some, you know, blues and purples you can see in these guys. And these eggs are officially bad at this point. These are not going to survive, and if I keep them in this egg box any longer, it is going to pose a significant risk of mold to my other good eggs. So we are gonna go ahead and actually pull these guys out. It sucks when things like this happen. Uh, they certainly don't smell good, and they don't feel good either. They are pretty nasty at this point. Like you can see, just completely rotten. No good at all. This one had no veins at all. I literally, I looked on the bottom, sides, top, I couldn't see any vein work in the entirety of this egg. And the egg on the left had some, God, this is nasty, had some vein work, but it was just really bad and I was not impressed with it at all. And that's actually a trick that I do. Like you can see, these eggs are at the front of the incubator. If I do candle an egg and it has bad vein work, I don't just automatically disregard it because sometimes you'd be surprised and they'll actually hatch and do fine. But I normally set them at the front of the incubator so that when I come in once or twice a week and I check and make sure everything's going well, check temperatures and stuff like that, I can very easily see whether or not the eggs are still doing good like the rest of this clutch is, or if unfortunately the eggs that didn't have the best vein work have gone bad, like these guys right here. It really sucks, it's quite nasty. These smell pretty bad if I'm being honest, but it's all part of breeding ball pythons, of breeding anything that lays eggs, whether it be a snake, gecko, turtle, tortoise, whatever it might be, 
and it's part of the process. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to throw these guys away. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video and this little update that we did on not only pulling this clutch, but all of the clutches we currently have in the incubator. We have a lot of cool ball python clutches coming out this year and next up. So the next clutch you guys are probably gonna see within a pretty short amount of time will actually be from this Mojave female. She just went through her prelay shed. Like I said, I am cleaning things right now. So this will be cleaned in no time after I stop filming this video, but she should be dropping a clutch within the next 30 days. And then right after her, we have a calico, which is up here. She's just about to ovulate. And then we also have a little bit further down a spider female who I also think is probably gonna ovulate in the next couple weeks to month. And she was bred to that coral glow chocolate male that bred our cinnamon female. And then the other one that should be ovulating should be right here. This normal female as well. She'll be ovulating within the next little while. So we're gonna have a lot of clutches this season. Like I said, hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, be sure to give this video a like. Be sure to leave a comment down below, and of course, subscribe. Thanks for watching today's video, and I will see you guys in the next video.